Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, gonna try a little bit different video today. Something that really I haven't, I have, haven't done. But I thought it might be, it might be interesting. I don't know, it might flop here. We'll see how it turns out. Uh, but I figure I would try a little bit of story time here. Kind of tell the story behind the video, I guess. And, you know, just, just video doesn't really tell, uh, you know, what's really happening. But uh, I want to go back to 2012. Um, I, don't, I wasn't really into YouTube, I don't think, that much back then. Uh, I did some videos here and there. I think I tried getting some of our Moss and videos out there. But uh, I don't know if I was like saying much in my videos. But uh, we'll go back to uh, 2012 with this story. And uh, kind of how this video come about was looking through all my older videos. Uh, Getting some uh, some good memories and some bad memories out of some of the videos, but uh, this I guess this one isn't really the best uh, memory, but uh, it's one of my uh, earlier videos, so I think we'll start we'll start there. Anyway, 2012. Uh, Talking about the Cranberry Marsh here. We have a Cranberry Marsh. Uh, my dad and my uncle and me uh, worked, worked our butt off to try to get this Cranberry Marsh going. Basically from, from nothing. Uh, I mean, you see our equipment. We, dad had an old excavator, old dump trucks, and a little 450 John Deere dozer. Uh, that pretty much uh, built the cranberry marsh that you uh, that that you see in the in the videos. And a lot of time, guys, a lot of time, uh, a lot of work, a lot of money too, a lot of sacrifice. But uh, 2011, I believe, we got our first crop, and it it wasn't much. It was. Not a very good crop, but you got to remember, uh, cranberry vines, uh, once you plant them and uh, start them growing, uh, you got to wait years before you get good crops off them. And, and we aren't, we're not a, an experienced uh, cranberry grower, so it actually took us quite a few years to get get even the small crop that we got in 2011 off it. But uh, 2012 rolls around and I believe it was a dry start to the year even. And uh, it, just, it just got drier and drier and drier. Uh, we, got a, we got a little pond, we don't have a big pond. Uh, like I said before, you know, we got old equipment. Uh, digging out the pond was, you know, the least of the worries. Building the marsh was first, so. Had a little pond, and it, it just kept, water kept getting lower and lower. And, uh, the, I remember the, the irrigation. You know, the pond was getting so low that uh, we were actually plugging up our irrigation with some sort of fish or I don't know what it was but whatever it was it was getting sucked through the pump and we had a heck of a time every time we irrigated just one sprinkler would plug up and then another one would plug up and I mean it got to a point that I think we were only irrigating for 20 minutes or something to before everything plugged up so bad. Uh, the pond we were 
sucking the water out of it was getting so low the fish and stuff must have been running to to the lowest spot there where we had the the pump suction and it was just a battle towards the end of the year it was a real battle to irrigate the cranberries without plugging up the plugging up the sprinkler heads had to go out there and had this little uh, little wire you just stick in the sprinkler head to unplug it sometimes it was so bad you had to take the tip off of the, the sprinkler to unplug it but so we were pumping uh, water from all of our ditches into the pond to try to keep the, the water level up so we could keep irrigating the cranberries kept them alive till uh, about harvest time. I really don't know how because I mean the water situation was, was pretty bad. Actually uh, it's probably the worst drought I've ever seen. Uh, my dad tried to get a, a well before harvest time and uh, tried, tried to get some uh, help from, from the banker and uh, you know wells around here are 20, 20 to 30,000 and uh, you know we just don't have that kind of cash laying around so went to the banker, banker was no help. Uh, really I don't know why because uh, we, we had way more equity then we had debt because dad, like I said, dad pretty much built the marsh with old junky equipment. You know, we, there was no money in the equipment. So uh, it was pretty much all determination uh, on my, my dad and my uncle. And I was helping out too. So anyway, the banker was no help. So we pretty much pretty much know we're gonna have to harvest the cranberries without water. Um, in this in this next clip uh, you're just gonna see dad using the excavator to uh, dig a little notch in the side of this uh, hole, one of the few holes we had left that had enough water in it so we could use the machine that picks them up, cleans them, and puts them in the in the truck. So he was digging a little notch in the in the ground so I could dump the cranberries uh, through a screen and kind of separate some of the, the garbage and the vines that the dry picker uh, grabbed when they were when it was harvesting the, the berries out of the bed. cranberries and it's just a machine that you it drives out and rakes up the cranberries 
And you can do it without water. So you don't, you don't need any water. So he went out to, I don't know where it was, I think Massachusetts or something, and picked up, picked up four or five of them or something. And I don't, I don't know where, he got them pretty cheap. I don't know how he found them or whatever, but he found them. And, uh, you know, pretty much desperate to get our crop harvested. I mean, it was our best crop. To, to that day, you know, I mean, it was a really good crop. I, I remember looking out, seeing all the cranberries. I mean, we, we never had a crop like that. It was going to be a good crop. Uh, it would have more than, than paid for a well if we could have got all of our crop harvested. But anyway, we, Dad went and got these machines and tried, we started harvesting with them. And it, it was pretty evident that we weren't going to get the job done with, uh, you know, there's three of us, me, my dad, and my uncle. And you got to run, drive those machines down the beds. And, you know, they're only so wide. And... It was pretty evident that we weren't going to be able to harvest our whole crop that way. It just, it just wasn't going to happen. We started having problems with the machines and they wouldn't stay running. And it was just kind of a real mess. Uh, we, we, got some, we got some of the berries harvested. And uh, we kind of had a system going, but... It, it just it wasn't going to happen, not, not with three guys uh, out there doing that. So we got, a, we got a pretty good rainstorm, finally. Um, you know, while we were uh, trying to get through the dry harvest and actually filled up our pond pretty, pretty good, actually. You know, it was a pretty good rainstorm. We hadn't got much rain that year, but this was a pretty good rainstorm. So, knowing we weren't going to be able to do the dry harvest on the whole marsh, we abandoned that idea and we decided to flood uh, the best, our best bed, the one that had the most cranberries in it. So we were just going to sacrifice the rest of them, just flood one bed, and, you know, just get the crop off that one because the options were dwindling. Uh, you got to remember that late in the year, you can't let the cranberries freeze either. So every night, if it freezes, you have to sprinkle the cranberries. You have to run the irrigation. And the water situation in the pond wasn't good. So... You know, how long can you keep doing that and, you know, not freeze the cranberries? So, it was, it was a pretty desperate situation, guys, looking back. And, uh, well, anyway, we got the rainstorm and we started flooding one bed and we got the beater tractor out there to uh, knock all the cranberries off. And as we were flooding it, there, it got pretty evident that we weren't going to be able to flood the cranberries. Or we weren't going to be able to flood the whole bed, knock the cranberries off, and then raise the water level up so we could corral all the berries down to the end. It was pretty evident we didn't have enough water to raise it up to float the berries to one end. And that was evident after we knocked the berries off with the machine. We couldn't, we couldn't get the water any higher because we run out of water. And uh, it, was, it was a pretty bad situation. Um, I, remember, I remember being out in the field trying to 
trying to rake the berries down. The, the one end had a little more water in it and we could actually float the berries. And I remember trying to, to rake as many berries as I could into the deeper water. I mean, these guys, these cranberry beds are huge. I mean, you, I guess you don't really realize how big they are till you get down in them. And, you know, just, I mean, I, there's, there's cranberries all around me. And just trying to rake them down was, was, I don't know, it, it wasn't going to happen. I mean, it was, it, it was bad. It was, it was not a good situation because we had already sacrificed the, the rest of the crop to try to get this one bed. And it was quickly realized that we weren't even going to get that bed. So we, uh, we, were, we were just trying to get the one end that was a little, had more water on it. And we were trying to get them picked up and in the truck. You know, so we had something. So we had something to put in the truck. Uh, one of my uncles came by and pretty much that was the only that was the only person we ever saw out there was was him and uh, you know it's kind of like you know uh, when you're winning everybody wants to be around you uh, when you're when you're losing pretty much nobody wants to be around you and uh, you know everybody everybody knew we were struggling so we didn't we didn't see anybody out there. Uh, except for him. So he sees me out there raking, trying to get these uh, berries raked out. Pretty sure he felt pretty bad about looking our situation over, how we were losing everything. And uh, he actually brought by this little boat thing. I think I got pictures of it. I was pretty ashamed and I never, I don't think I posted them on the YouTube video or anything, because I was, I was pretty ashamed of our situation back then. But anyway, he brought these boats that they used to harvest cranberries with. And we actually used that little steel boat and we used the beater tractor. And we went around, drove around and, and uh, shoveled as many cranberries in, those, in, that, in that boat as we could. And we pretty much did that till, I mean, we were exhausted, you know. It was day after day after day of, of just disappointments, uh, struggling, you know, losing the water. And uh, pretty much, pretty much exhausted and we just, we just gave up there. I mean, there was, you can only have your bed flooded for so long. You know, then the cranberries start to rot. It's kind of got to be a quick process where you flood the bed, knock them off, corral them, and pick them up. You can't, I mean, you just can't leave them in the, in the water forever. So, uh, but we were out of time. We were out of time. We were out of, out of energy to keep going. So, you know, we got, I don't know. I really don't know what we had. We had a lot of cranberries out there. I mean, they were all around me. I seen them. I'm not even sure we got a quarter of that bed harvested. So, 2012, we uh, pretty much lost our entire cranberry crop. And, uh, that was tough, guys. That was a tough year. You know, you, you work, you work so hard at something, and then, you know, we struggled that year. We struggled the whole year. And we, we kept the cranberries alive all the way to harvest. And I don't know, really know how we did that, but we did that. And then just to lose them all, it was tough.
I mean, I, I mean, it was tough. But anyway, I'm gonna try to add some pictures, guys. I think I got a bunch of pictures. I got a little bit of video from that year. And I'm gonna try to add it to my video here. Well, guys, I guess that's gonna do it for this, uh, this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed the, my little story. And uh, we'll see what happens here. I don't know how this uh, video is going to go, if people are going to like it or whatever, but uh, I don't know, throwing it out there, giving it a shot. We'll see what happens. Um, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Get a little stronger from the hurt time